Hi everyone, I'm Sarah Kafashan, a teaching and learning consultant here at Conestoga. You're watching one of several videos as part of our Learning Pathway series, a series created especially for new faculty to become more equipped when teaching courses at Conestoga. As you can see from my slide, this Learning Pathway will be about preparing for the first lesson. In this video, we'll talk about what to do before the first lesson, how to set up your lesson, as well as strategies for the beginning, during, and end of lesson. We'll also be talking about what to do when you're teaching in the three modes, so either in person, online synchronously, or asynchronously. We've got many resources to support you when you're looking at what to do before the first lesson. And these are just three hub posts which you can read to learn more. If you'd like to read more, please check out the links below this video. Another key consideration before the first lesson is to develop a lesson plan. A lesson plan is a roadmap to the lesson you deliver to students. It has structure, sequence, and the materials needed from the beginning to the end of the lesson. When creating a lesson plan, we recommend an intentional structure like the BOPS model here that you see on my slide. BOPS is an acronym. The first letter, B, stands for bridging. The bridge is really connecting the student to the topic of the lesson, so making that connection for them. The O stands for outcomes, so letting students know what are the outcomes of this lesson, how do they tie to the course learning outcomes. The first P stands for pre-test or pre-assessment. Here we're really examining any existing knowledge that students are coming into the lesson about the topic of the lesson. So what do they already know? The second P is for participatory learning. Here, as the faculty, we're presenting new information and we're getting students to participate in the learning by engaging in, in the material that we're presenting. Uh, the third and final P stands for post-test or post-assessment. Here we're checking that learning actually got completed and got done. So we might engage students with a 5HP activity. We might engage them with some questions and checking their understanding. And lastly, S is for summary. Here we summarize the key takeaway points so that students know the main points by the end of the lesson. For more resources for your lesson planning, you can check out two hub posts, which you can find the link below. If you'd like, you can also download and, and use our BOPS lesson plan template. Now that we've talked about what to do before that first lesson, let's move on to the next section and talk about how to set up that first lesson. On this slide, I'm gonna be talking about key things you need to remember when you're setting up that first in-person lesson. First thing is to arrive at least up to eight minutes early before your lesson begins. At Conestoga, classes end at the 50 minute mark and the next class starts on the hour. So you've got about eight to 10 minutes to arrive in that classroom and set it up so that you can start teaching. A really important part of teaching is taking attendance and getting to know your students by knowing their names. One thing that we recommend is using name tents. What you could do is just get a piece of A4 paper and fold it in half and get students to write their names on it. You could use these to take attendance as well. So these name tents can be returned to by your students to you at the end of class. And at the beginning of the next class, students can pick up their name tents, put it in front of them on the desk so that you can learn their name and you can collect any name tents that are not used as a way to gauge attendance. When you're setting up an in-person class, you also want to make sure that the slides are projected and ready to be shown to your students. As well, it's good practice to write on the whiteboard the agenda for the day, noting when breaks will be taken and what key concepts will be covered, as well as any key terms, uh, especially new terms that your students will be learning. Lastly, it's important to also put information about the course and your contact information directly on the board in legible writing. When setting up your lesson and teaching online synchronously on Zoom or Teams, you have three steps to take and ensure. 
First, arrive early as well so that you can greet, welcome students, and begin building some rapport with them. Second, make sure that students' names on their Zoom account or Teams matches their actual names on the attendance list so that you can effectively take attendance. And third, ensure that you have your screen share set up with your slides um, available for students to see. You want to make sure you have your course uh, name and contact information, as well as the agenda up for students to see. When you're beginning a lesson, whether it's in person or synchronous, we always want to make sure we get into the habit of starting on time. This will let students know that starting on time is important and that they should arrive on time. Another piece is reviewing expectations for students throughout the class. One piece might be about telling students that if they arrive late, they should do so quietly without disrupting other students, whether it's over a Zoom lesson or Teams lesson or in an in-person class setting. Also, if students are in person, masks are encouraged. And we would also ask students to have their beverages coverage covered so that we don't have additional mess. During the lesson, if you're teaching in person, you want to follow along with these suggestions I have on my slide. So the first is to support and monitor device use. When in lesson, students may have a computer, a tablet, or their phone for learning purposes. So you may want to walk around and ensure that students are indeed using these devices for the teaching and learning purposes in the classroom. Have large legible board work on your whiteboard, avoiding red and green markers. You want your letters to be at least three inches tall so that students can see that from the back. We also want to promote self-management for students. So allow them to use the washroom whenever they need and to move their body as needed. It's important to take breaks, specifically 10 minutes for each hour. So if you've got a three hour lesson, you wanna make sure you have at least two 10 minute breaks and you finish 10 minutes before the hour. Allow for preferred seating so that students can sit where they please and those with accessibility needs with vision or auditory needs can sit in the front. We work in smaller groups when we're engaging students and uh, testing their learning. So you can always use um, where students are seated so they don't have to move around as well as much. One other important piece is to ensure that coats and backpacks are stowed away so that we have clear exit paths. During the lesson, if you're teaching synchronously on Zoom or Teams, you have similar tips and strategies. You may want to use the annotate function or the whiteboard function on Zoom. Again, use large legible font avoiding red and green. Your font size here should be about 18 point. You may want to use some of our institutionally licensed educational technology tools like Mentimeter, Padlet, and Kahoot to engage our students. If you want more information on that, check out the links below this video. You could use the breakout function to put students into smaller groups for group work. You can also use shared online documents, like a shared Word document to give instructions for breakout room activities and allow students to create collaborative notes there. Lastly, don't forget to give your students 10 minute break for every hour of teaching. At the end of the lesson, regardless of whether it's in person or synchronous, the lessons end at 50 minutes uh, before the hour. We also want to ensure that we take time before the end of the lesson to remind students of when the next lesson is and any tasks that they may need to do to prepare for the upcoming lesson. In addition, if we're teaching in person, we want to ensure that we erase all board work and ask students to remove, remove any garbage from their tables before leaving. What about teaching asynchronously? Here are some strategies to use when you're teaching asynchronously via eConestoga. First, I'd recommend creating a short orientation to support students with limited or no experience with online learning. You could have a written document or a short video orientation in your first announcement to orientate them to the course. Second, students want to get to know you. 
So create a page in eConestoga with some information about you and your professional skills. Thirdly, it's a good idea to monitor participation. You can do this by using the class list function or the class progress function in eConestoga to see what sort of pages and components and modules in eConestoga students are viewing and going through. And you can also use this, use the discussion forum to see how much they're participating. Lastly, students are gonna have lots of questions and they're gonna be reaching out to you. It's good practice to anticipate these questions and have a living space in the course shell for students to ask these questions. You may wanna have a discussion forum specifically for students to post any questions they have about the course to you, or you wanna have a space for frequently asked questions in eConestoga. For more information about asynchronous teaching, check out the link to a blog post listed below this video. For additional resources on how to prepare for that first lesson, check out two additional hub posts, which you can find the link for below this video. That concludes this video series. If we can help you further or in any way in setting up for your first lesson, please email us at the email address listed on the slide. Thank you.